Hi, I'm Rob Price, EMS Safety's Program and Resource Director. Today's teaching by topic is going to be shown by Louis Luani. He's going to demonstrate for us how to teach first aid assessment to the class. When we teach this, there's four key objectives we want the students to know. The first one is to understand the three phases of assessment. The second is to be able to demonstrate an initial assessment. We also want them to know to call 911 for certain situations and we need them to know how to prioritize life-threatening conditions first, such as respiratory arrest or severe bleeding. Students should know to ensure their own safety first and at all times. When we're conducting the assessment, we want to make sure we assess the patient in the position they're found in and only move them to administer a life-saving treatment or if the scene becomes unsafe. Also, we want the students to know how to assess life-threatening conditions first so we want them to control severe bleeding before splinting a limb. To demonstrate this to the class, you'll need either an adult mannequin or a full body mannequin, or you could bring one of the students up and use them as a volunteer. When you practice this, you're going to break your students up into smaller groups of two or three and provide them with a mannequin or a volunteer. And we want to give them a reasonable scenario. It doesn't need to be a plane crash or some horrific event. Just a simple fall from a ladder will do. Use a skill sheet to follow along and have the students use their workbooks. Now, let's turn this over to Louie so we can see this lesson in action. Hi everybody, my name is Louie Lewanig and today we're going to go over how to teach assessing the victim. Now as you know there are three phases of assessment. The first phase is the scene size up, second is going to be your initial assessment of the patient, and third is going to be your ongoing assessment. So let's take it step by step. Number one, scene size up. Before you approach an emergency scene, stop. Look to the left, look right, look up, and look down. Okay, is the scene safe? If it is not safe, call 911. Do not approach, keep the bystanders safe. If the scene is safe, think about looking at how many victims are there, their general condition, how they may have gotten hurt, Check for resources such as bystanders, first aid kits, maybe cell phones that can help you. Now, always suspect serious injury if you have a motor vehicle accident, such as a motorcycle accident, a fall from a bicycle, or perhaps a fall from greater than standing height. Anything involving gunshot wounds or explosions are going to be serious. Let's go to the second phase. The second phase is going to be your initial patient assessment. As you approach a patient from the side, you've thought about PPE such as gloves, you're going to kneel down next to the patient and the first thing you're going to do is try to find if there are any immediate life threats such as unconsciousness, difficulty breathing, or perhaps evidence of severe bleeding. If any of those things are noticeable right now, stop and treat. Now generally, if those things are not obvious, you're going to go ahead and treat the patient in the condition you find them. The first thing we want to assess is their responsiveness. If they appear unresponsive, tap and shout to see what happens. Hey, are you okay? Are you okay? If there's no response, send somebody to call 911 right away. Or if you're by yourself, you need to make that call. Now, if they're responsive, you need to identify yourself, tell them you're trained in first aid, and ask them if you can help. My name is Louie. I'm trained in first aid. Can I help you? Now if they say yes, go ahead and ask them what hurts and maybe they can tell you how they got hurt. After that, we're going to move on to assessing breathing. Okay? If somebody is not breathing, as you check for breathing, you look for 5 to 10 seconds, or if they're gasping, we need to go ahead and consider starting CPR. Now, if they are breathing, we need to determine the quality of that breathing, the rate, and perhaps the effort. Is a patient having difficulty breathing? Is it noisy? Or is it a normal breath? Are they able to speak to you normally? Those might indicate problems that we need to find what's causing them. Now, if help hasn't already arrived, we move on to an additional phase, which is the head-to-toe assessment. Now the head to toe assessment is a visual survey of the patient from top to bottom. Now as you do that, if you notice life threats, 
such as unresponsiveness, severe bleeding, or maybe difficulty breathing, again, you need to stop and treat that situation right now. If none of those conditions are obvious, go ahead and continue your visual survey, looking for anything that doesn't look normal, such as wounds or deformities, twisted limbs, etc. Talk to your patient. Ask them to see if what hurts. Maybe they can point to pain or any problems they may have. Go down the body systems. Ask them to take a breath. As you get down here, let me give you an example. What if the patient now says their stomach hurts? What are you going to do? Well, something's in the way to help you, uh, preventing you from seeing what's the problem. Tell them what you want to do and go ahead and lift up the clothing and expose down to the skin so you can take a look. You may get some additional information you didn't have before, okay? Lastly, check for any medical alert jewelry, such as necklaces, or in this case, we have a bracelet indicating this person has severe allergies. That's important information. Now the last phase is the ongoing assessment. With the ongoing assessment, we need to reassess the scene to make sure it's still safe and continue reassessing and checking on our patient to make sure that their mental status hasn't changed and that their condition has not deteriorated. Lastly, you want to review with your students when to call 911 for serious emergencies such as severe bleeding, unconsciousness, heart attack, or perhaps even a stroke. And also review with them when they should get medical help themselves. That's how you teach assessing a victim. Check the scene for safety. Check the patient to make sure that they are okay and they don't have any threats to life. And then continue checking them until help arrives. That's it. For EMS Safety Services, I'm Louis Lewanig.